Hi and welcome to this getting started video for write back table and input form. The application we use in this video is available for download on our website. Navigate to the demo apps and search for write back. First thing to do in the application is to make sure that you carefully follow the instructions on this sheet. If it is not done correctly, none of the reloads will work. This sheet also allows you to reset everything if you accidentally change or delete the demo data. Column Showcase Table shows all available visualization options for write back. Text, checkbox, and toggle are probably rather self explanatory, but note how the text can also be a text area with multiple rows. In the Country drop down column, note how we have used a flag as an extra visual aid. The color picker is perfect for grouping things by color. And with the icons, you can use both the icon itself and the color to indicate a value. Rating could be any number of stars or other icons. And the slider is a good option for quickly changing a value. For numbers, it is also possible to use calculations and even simple arithmetic in the actual cell. When adding multiple items on the same row, chips is a good visualization type. Note how you can quickly add multiple objects by adding a comma in the text input. When more advanced logic is needed, there is also the option of using an editable click expression that gives access to the full power of the click engine. For dates, use the calendar option where you can also quickly change years and months. For simple selections, use either the radio button with the single value selection or the checkbox for multiple choice. In Click, we're used to selections being associated. Drop downs in Write Back have a similar functionality. The way it works is that we can group related fields together with what we call an association ID. Fields with the same association ID will then use the ClickSense logic to filter values. When we select product line, we only get product groups that relate to that product line. Other options are either in gray or completely hidden depending on your settings. It also works the other way around. If you select a product, it will automatically fill the values for product group and product line. No need for this to be a perfect hierarchy. The logic is just like with ClickSense selections. If you need to be able to fit more rows on a single page, the row height is adjustable. Either just select compact or use custom to set your own padding and font size. The table can be completely styled with different colors to match a corporate standard or just make it look nice. Start with the main colors and then adjust more details in the table, header and footer settings. Each color can also be an expression so variables can be used and allow you to quickly change the color schema later on. Working with larger datasets, make sure to carefully consider both what the user needs to see and how big the actual table for input is. A good practice is to never write directly to a transactional table when it can be avoided, since it will be a lot slower than connecting the data while keeping it in a separate and much smaller table. One way to improve the user input experience on wider tables is to use form view. On the right hand of the table, click on the icon to reveal more columns to edit. In other words, display only the most relevant columns in the table to keep it light and airy, and show the details in form view where you can design a nice form for the user to fill out. This example shows how you can easily create a review system with a rating and a comment. Selecting a salesperson is required and we then use a star rating and a text area for the input. Top selling product and revenue generated are automatically collected from the data and stored with the review. For what-if scenarios and other situations where you may need real-time updates without reload, variables can be very useful. With input form you can build a rather big but still user-friendly input for any scenario. Update the variables can be set to happen immediately or only after submit. This is another example of how the input form can be used. Note how the switch for has contact information is used to hide a whole section of the input form. Also try adding a salary larger than $10,000. This will open up an extra section with confirmation options. 
The calculation for this is found in the layout wizard. Defaults can be used to pre-populate a field with values. Use either a static value or a calculation. In this example, we pick up all selected values in the country fields and create a list based on the selections. We also present a calculation of the number of selected countries. Similar to defaults, values in the columns can also be calculated based on click expressions or by referencing other columns. See here how the username will change when selecting user ID. For both writeback table and input form, we can use hours and minutes in dropdowns to select a time. Note how the example uses a calculated column to combine the date hour minute input to one timestamp to be saved in the database and then split up again with the clever use of calculated dimension when read back and visualized in the writeback table. Similarly, the hour column is calculated from the timestamp with a click expression. Show column if is used to only show the AM PM option if US format is selected with the radio button. Another option is using a text object with regex validation that makes sure the time is entered in the correct format. Here is an example of what that looks like. When using the overwrite option in destination, all data is replaced with the content of the table. This is typically most useful for smaller tables where you do not need to keep track of changes. This also means that if a selection is made, only the data available is written back. Insert, delete, and duplicate of rows can be configured here in the settings. Note that using overwrite in combination with section access is possible, but most likely not a good idea. Setting the destination to delete adds a checkbox to the left that allows you to delete selected or even all rows. Simply make your selection and press the button. With Vislib Server, we're not limited by the access given to an individual user, which means that we can make it both secure and much more flexible than without the server. Configuration for write back with Vislib Server is found in the VMC. Using Vislib Server is a requirement for secure data write back and a must have for almost any production implementation of write back. Finally, this page showcases how the writeback table can be used to administrate application settings. Most features of this demo app are configurable on this sheet, so changing here would change it in the rest of the application too. Thanks for listening. Check out our website for the full documentation and more examples. And don't forget to follow us on social media for the latest updates.